In today's video, I'm gonna give you my top tips I've used for taking better travel photos. Of course, we all love going off on our holidays, and if you're watching this video, then odds are you're also pretty into your photography, and combining both of those things is, of course, great fun. And whether you're trying to do travel photography professionally, or you just want some better snaps from your next holidays, then there are plenty of ways that you can improve the shots you come away with. Now, I usually focus more on macro photography on this channel, but to be honest, a lot of my professional work does focus on travel. I'm certainly no seasoned expert, but quite a few of my shots have been used in a variety of magazines and books and other publications, and I definitely have picked up a few tips that I've found helpful. So let's dive in. Travel light. Unless you're doing a big road trip in a gigantic van, then odds are you're going to have to be pretty selective about what you take with you. And that is critical when it comes to your camera gear. You don't want to be weighed down with having dedicated rolling cases full of all of your cameras and lenses and filters and tripods. It's going to be difficult getting around, it's difficult getting in and out of transport, in and out of hotels, and really, do you need to take all that stuff with you? So instead, consider the areas that you're going to and really think about the sorts of shots that you're hoping to achieve, and then plan your kit accordingly. If you're looking for wildlife shots, then sure, take that massive zoom lens. Otherwise, you can probably leave that one at home. A standard zoom like a 24 to 105 may not be the coolest or most artistic lens in a lot of photographers' eyes, but it is a great lens to travel with as it does cover such a wide zoom range, allowing you to get both wide, sweeping landscapes, but also with enough zoom to get in on those details. And you don't need to mess around with taking multiple lenses and swapping them out on location. I took this one on a recent trip around Sicily, but to be honest, I actually rarely used it. Instead, I actually used this, my 50mm f1.8 Canon lens, often referred to as the Nifty 50. Now, I love this lens and it was the perfect tool for the job because it is so small, it is so lightweight, and at f1.8, it's still nice and fast. And I love the sorts of reportage style shots that I was able to get with just a 50mm focal length. But keeping things light also means keeping things nimble. With just this on my camera body, I was able to take that anywhere I want to. It was always in my backpack, ready to go whenever I saw an opportunity. So even as I wandered around the old streets, I could just have my camera in my hand. And as a result, I never missed a shot that I wanted to get. Not sure if you need a tripod? Then consider my little DIY travel tripod hack. It's just a ball head on a clamp really, but find a railing or a bench or a bin and clamp your camera to it to get some steady shots. Next up, really get to know your camera. Now, of course, no matter what camera or lenses or other equipment you decide to take with you, it's really important to actually know how to use it. So that means getting back to basics. Know how to set your focus points and how to use them. Know how to quickly adjust your ISO when you need a faster shutter speed. Know how to change into burst mode when you know that you quickly need a series of shots. Even just learning how to properly navigate the menu so that you can change up those settings in an instant can be really, really important. Because great travel photography is so often about capturing those moments that arrive and vanish in a second. Whether it's capturing some folk on market day, capturing some cats going about their business, or simply taking a shot of a Sicilian man pulling up his socks. Being able to use your camera quickly enough to react to those moments and get them on your camera is so, so important. In fact, all of my personal favorite travel photos have been very much those windows into a little moment in time. And all of those have relied on being able to quickly get my camera ready and take that shot. One of my favorite shots from Sicily was this shot when I'd intentionally used a slower shutter speed to blur the busy tourists walking past, but keeping these friends chatting looking nice and sharp. I love the contrast of their slow conversation with the world whizzing by, and it's only a shot I was able to achieve by being able to know exactly how to control my camera. But it's also one of my favorites because it really provides that window into their real life goings on at that point in time. Which brings me on to my next point. 
tell stories like a journalist. Now, I've been a journalist and a photographer for many years now, and that means always thinking about not just how to capture a nice view in my camera, but how to really tell a story with my images. And I find when I think like that on holiday, I come back with a set of images that is really evocative of the place that I've been. And as a result, I often end up putting together little photo books of some of my different trips, and I love flicking back through them. So in practice, that means that sure, I'm gonna take a common viewpoint over Palermo like this sunset, but I then dive into the city, I explore the streets, and I find those smaller details that add context, that adds vibrancy and life. So maybe that's beautiful old doors or street lights on buildings, weather-worn signs, old cars, people doing whatever it is people do wherever you are, or even more cats because you can never take too many photos of cats. It's often those little elements that capture the spirit of a location so much more than just visiting a common viewpoint, but they're particularly important in actually telling your story, the things that really mattered to you and caught your eye when you were on your travels. And it's those images that you will look back on most fondly in years to come. Next up, do your research. Doing your research about an area isn't just going to help you get better photos, it's actually going to help you enjoy your holiday even more, so there's really no reason not to spend the time on it. From a photography perspective, it is really important to know where some of the really good photo locations are. Maybe it's where the best views of a city are, maybe it's where the best markets are, maybe it's just about what best time of day to visit a certain location. And often a good starting point for those kinds of things is just searching for the location on Instagram and taking a look through what's there. And sure, you'll find a lot of cliched shots and the same thing often again and again, but that can also be really helpful to give you an idea of the sort of shots maybe you don't want to take. Start getting your mind thinking about how you might want to do those same shots a little bit differently. And of course, Googling your holiday destination and photo spots or photo locations, and you will find plenty of forum posts on places like TripAdvisor or even Reddit about really good photo locations to go to. And there's probably a whole bunch of independent travel blogs that have got lists of the best photo locations for a particular city or country. And I use exactly this information to find a great rooftop bar that allowed me to get this sunset shot over Palermo and a church rooftop in a different part of the city to get these daytime ones. But it's not just the locations you should look for. Do your research for any local events that might be taking place, whether that is a, a festival, a sporting event of some kind, or even just a Saturday market. These types of events can be amazing photo opportunities and again, really help tell that story of wherever it is you're visiting. But my final tip is also one of the most important ones. Take your time. Good photography rarely happens when you are rushing about and forcing yourself to try and take the best shot. And it's certainly not a good way to actually enjoy a nice relaxing holiday. So instead, slow down with your camera. Try and immerse yourself more in the destination that you're in before you start firing away. Look around and take it all in. Maybe sit in a nice square and have a beer and watch the world go by for five minutes before you start trying to find your shots. Remember that you're there to enjoy yourself and when you start to enjoy yourself, your photos will start to reflect that as well. Let's not forget, photography is supposed to be fun but take the time to actually explore your surroundings as well. Walk down different roads and alleyways and see what you can see. Leave your hotel one way and then walk back an entirely different one just to see what happens. I love taking those small winding back streets, particularly in European cities, because you just never know what kind of things you're going to see. And sure, if I end up getting lost, then I just get my phone out and I found my way back with Google. It's not a problem. Not only do I actually get more photos, but I also feel like I've actually seen more of the city, more of the place that I've been in, and I feel more connected with it as a result. But that does bring me to an end of today's video. It has been a very talky one and uh, slightly inspired by the fact that I have actually been away traveling for work for the past two or three weeks. So this is what we're doing. <laughs> But um, uh, if you have enjoyed the video, then do please uh, hit that like button and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.